Good afternoon, everybody. I want to, uh, first of all, welcome you to City Hall here in Brockton. Uh, in my humble opinion, the best city hall in the Commonwealth. It's beautiful. So after we conclude today, please enjoy. This is called the, uh, the Great Room. Please enjoy the unbelievable artwork that's here. Uh, it's really my honor and privilege to, uh, to thank Congressman Stephen Lynch, uh, who is a friend, but really the example of what a public servant is all about. Uh, you know, he has been an advocate for the City of Champions uh, without question uh, as long as he has been in Washington, D.C. since 2001. And so today, I want to thank him. We were able to have, as a result of the Congressman's advocacy, able to have the FDIC Chairman, Chairman Greenberg, with us here today. We had a lot of different partners. Uh, and it was a listening tour. It was an ability for a lot of different uh, folks that provide affordable housing here in the Commonwealth, and specifically here in Brockton, Massachusetts. And so I want to just thank the Congressman and his team. Uh, I want to thank um, City Clerk Tim Cruz for allowing us to have the roundtable upstairs in the chamber today. But again, without further ado, Congressman Stephen Lynch, the best Congressman in our United States of America. Thank you, Congressman. Very kind, very kind. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Um, and, and, and right back at you in terms of uh, your leadership here in the city. You've been a wonderful, wonderful partner, and especially on this issue. Uh, just to give some context, uh, as you know, uh, I think it's over two months ago now, uh, we had the collapse of uh, Silicon Valley Bank. Many people would ask, what the heck does that have to do with Massachusetts? It's a California-based bank. But uh, at one point in time, they actually purchased uh, a, a local bank here in the Boston area. And as a result of that purchase um, and the, the commitment that, that a prior bank had made to affordable housing in Massachusetts, there are about 18 public housing developments, low-income public housing developments that are at risk because of the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank. And while the FDIC, and, and uh, I want to be thanked, uh, be uh, grateful to Chairman Grunberg for, for coming here. Uh, as a result of the intervention by the FDIC, the depositors, uh, mostly high net worth individuals, were rescued. Uh, their, their, um, their deposits were secured and guaranteed by the FDIC. However, and ironically, uh, low income housing tenants and the people who rely on that public housing uh, were not were not protected. And so uh, I, I, I pointed out that, uh, that uh, unfairness uh, to the FDIC in a hearing several weeks ago in Washington, D.C., and I got a commitment from, uh, from Chairman Grunberg to come here to Brockton to see what Mayor Sullivan is doing, see what our public housing and low-income housing developers are doing here in Brockton to transform this city and, and to indicate that this is happening across the state and across the country. And because of the collapse of this bank, what would happen if the successor bank of uh, first citizens from North Carolina were not to assume those obligations and follow through on those commitments? So uh, we had a good opportunity to have many of the leaders from uh, CHAPA and Mass Housing uh, come forward and explain to the chairman what it meant what was at stake for Brockton if we don't get reassurance that, uh, that those commitments will be continued by the successor bank? And uh, I want to thank all of the leaders in the affordable housing, the low-income development housing uh, community for coming forward and explaining that situation in very clear terms, as well as Mayor Sullivan uh, putting it right out there what this means to us. Uh, I, I can assure you uh, that uh, in my discussions with uh, Chair Grunberg, he gets that, he understands that. Uh, the FDIC does control uh, and oversee the CRA commitments, the Community Reinvestment Act commitments that must be met by the successor bank. So there's some leverage there, and uh, he assured me that the message would be clear that we expect that that mission to the CRA shall be fulfilled. So now it's our job uh, collectively, I think, to engage with uh, First Citizens Bank and express to them the willingness that we have to create a, a relationship, 
an ongoing relationship, not, not just for those 18 projects that are ongoing, but for the future, because uh, the housing situation is not getting any better anywhere else in the state very soon without the help of, of our affordable housing development community and also the banks. The banks, you know, provide about 70 to 80 percent of the funding on these projects, so it's very, very important that we have their commitment. Um, that, that's about it. Uh, we, we were, very, again, very grateful uh, for uh, the mayor hosting it here. I think it gave Chair Grunberg a, a, a good snapshot of what this means uh, going forward. And I also want to, again, thank the FDIC for their willingness to bring their, their expertise to bear on uh, solving the problems that we have here uh, in the city of Brockton and across the state of Massachusetts. So, so thank you. And uh, uh, the mayor and I are, are more than willing to take any questions. I do, uh, I do also just want to uh, say that, you know, as the congressman had shared with me just several weeks ago when, uh, when I was visiting him in Washington, D.C., you know, to be an effective leader, you have to be a good listener. And so that's what today was about, right? Uh, the chairman definitely listened to us. We did a walking tour. Uh, you know, we were walking and talking. We went to 93 Center Street, which is a project by Ted Carmen in Concord Square. It's a phenomenal project in an opportunity zone. Uh, and then we went to uh, 121 Main Street, uh, Networks Housing Solution, which uh, has a tenant in the, in the basement floor, which is Brockton Beer, one of the only, uh, uh, one, I think the six black owned brew pubs uh, in the Commonwealth. Um, and so we were able to also conclude by showing the chairman, uh, the congressman and I and our team walked over to the Liberty Tree because again, Brockton is a historic site, but um, really um, want to thank everybody that came here today, that participated, that shared uh, their viewpoints. Um, and again, none of this would have happened without the advocacy of, of Congressman Lynch. And I do want to recognize Joe Casey, CEO of, of Harbor One Bank, a uh, corporate office here in the City of Champions. Joe, thank you for being here as well. Were there any questions from anybody for, for Congressman or myself at this time? You're a good group. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah, come on up. Uh, I know Tim, Tim or Rob or uh, 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 Eric, anybody. Sure. If you want to give a quick synopsis of what was discussed on your behalf, that would be beneficial. Sure, that would be helpful. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Mayor. Thank you, Congressman. No, no, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Rob Corley. I'm the CEO of NeighborWorks Housing Solutions. And uh, Again, on behalf of our Board of Directors, um, Mayor, we want to thank you for, for hosting this event today and Congressman for coming uh, to Brockton uh, to see the wonderful work that's happening here in the city on behalf of ourselves and, and Ted and other, uh, many other developers. And in particular, I, re I really want to thank you, uh, Congressman, because uh, just three, well, three, four weeks ago, we were in D.C. Um, and uh, your team and you stepped right in putting together and providing leadership for that letter to ensure that these projects that we're developing were not left either on the, on the takeoff uh, uh, launch pad, uh, the ones that are in the air in full development right now, and also the ones that were coming in for the landing. Uh, at that particular moment, it was critical to have that kind of leadership for, for our groups here because of Boston Private's involvement in this particular situation. Um, it was crucial at that moment to make sure that these projects were saved um, and that they were invested in and that the commitments that were made from that lender were upheld. And without your leadership in leading the entire uh, state delegation and making sure that uh, letter was, I mean, we were, I think we were in the hall actually at one point uh, trying to put together the, 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 all the um, information for that letter. So we all came together and made that happen with your leadership and I really want to thank you for that support. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. I'm, my name is Eric Schupen. I'm the Director of Public Policy at CHAPA, the Citizens Housing and Planning Association. And uh, we want to say thank you again to Representative Lynch. We've extended those thanks before, but also to the mayor. Um, it was pretty neat being able to walk down the street with you and people shouting, hello, Mr. Mayor, how are you? And then stopping you at it. throw anything at not, you? Not, okay. No, yeah, yeah, we were okay. Well, we had a, we had a detail, so that was pretty good, too. Um, <laughs> And then stopping at the brewery to see the local businesses and the revitalization happening here in Brockton that um, is because of the leadership and also the resources that um, uh, 
banks like SVB provided to affordable housing developers and community development. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about the impact that SVB has had and then why it's so important that we need to take these actions today. Um, at CHAPA, we represent the entire housing ecosystem in Massachusetts, and we believe that everybody deserves a safe, healthy, accessible, and affordable place to call home in a community of their choice. And immediately following the, impact, the failure of SVB, we brought together the affordable housing community to share the information, concerns, and take action. And there we came to the federal delegation with a letter on behalf of uh, housing developers, operators, residents, advocates, and the 150,000 people who are on wait lists for affordable housing here in Massachusetts saying that we need to do something because we can't put at risk the affordable housing that we have as well as the future affordable housing that we're going to build in Massachusetts. Um, Silicon Valley Bank, through its, part, uh, through its acquisition of Boston Private, had a long history of uh, involvement in affordable housing here in Massachusetts. Um, they had a number of portfolio loans that uh, worked also to empower first-time home buyers, particularly first-time home buyers of color, and to close the home ownership gap. And so uh, we also had SVB on, uh, was a valued community investment uh, partner who invested in and served on boards of many of our community development corporations, uh, including uh, organizations like CHAPA. And with the failure of SVB, all this investment, leadership, and foresight evaporated overnight. And that's a loss not only for current deals, but also for leadership, affordable housing production, and home ownership into the future. Um, our asks were, were simple, to have SVB and their successor bank for our citizens and the FDIC guarantee that the projects that were moving forward continue to move forward. And what that meant was over 700 affordable homes that um, otherwise would have had to stop. Um, but now they are, you know, we have uh, commitments from First Citizens through the leadership uh, that we talked about here that those, th they're not going to be at risk. Um, and we wanted to make sure that the FDIC chair could be here and have an incredible opportunity really to speak truth to power and show him on the ground um, what those real world impacts are um, on the residents, on the workers, on the economies um, here in Brockton and communities across Massachusetts. So um, we hope that by doing this, uh, as we work to strengthen the banking system in, in the United States to recognize that affordable housing is a key piece of that and to not leave that behind. Don't forget about affordable housing um, because ultimately it's about uh, people having an affordable place to go home. So thank you very much. So this uh, concludes the press conference. I want to thank again Congressman Lynch, team, uh, Maeve, and everybody that worked with Sidney Merrill, my chief of staff, and my office, Kamaya as well. But listen, we are better together, so let's continue to work uh, for the, the position that we're charged to do, which is public service. So be well. God bless our, our Commonwealth, our city, and our nation. Be well. Thank you.